Uh, we, uh, we are going from one uh, very special guest uh, to another, as a matter of fact. Uh, this woman, you may have seen her on Comedy Central. She uh, headlined here last week, and she's here to do some time for you right now. Please put your hands together. Welcome to the stage. One of my favorites, the very funny Liz Mealy. I get it. I get it. A few jokes about it. So I, uh, I had a really weird uh, week last week. I, uh, I was on the subway, reading a book, minding my own business. And this woman, as she's about to get off the train, gets in my face and says, Jesus loves you, and Jesus died for you. Which is confusing for a lot of reasons, right? Because first of all, I was doing nothing wrong. And second of all, how are you going to assume we had the same beliefs and interests? That'd be like if I was getting off the train and I was like, hey everybody, remember, Glee is on tonight. It's like a really good show. And Jesus loves you. I'm, uh, I'm in a very weird place right now. Uh, you guys might be there too. I hate all my friends. All of them, they all suck. I was talking to a friend of mine, he sneezed, I said bless you, he said no thanks. <laughs> Which is weird, because I knew he was an atheist, but I didn't know he was a douche. <laughs> I just feel like it's a common courtesy, right? It's just a little friendly thing like, hey, I hope that's not serious and you don't die. But now I totally hope he dies. <laughs> it's really changed the dynamic of our friendship. Uh -huh. I, uh, I, feel, I feel lucky. Uh, I'm one of the few comics and say that uh, my parents are actually very supportive of my stand-up. Uh, they just told me for the first time recently, so let's be honest, a little less supportive. Uh, <laughs> but my dad's kind of cool about it. He came up to me after the show. He's like, hey, I, I think you're funny. I just don't like that you curse. I think it's really unladylike that you curse. And I was like, you know, it's also not ladylike. Working? <laughs> Voting, having opinions, going to college. This joke goes on forever. It's one of my favorite jokes. I do 20 minutes. I don't know. I, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm seeing a therapist. It's going really well, thanks for asking. I don't really understand therapy. I figured I'd just tell this woman everything until eventually somebody loves me. Is that how you know it's over? When do you stop paying them? <laughs> but I keep telling this woman everything, trying to get her to fix me. And I admitted the other day that I have a problem with overeating. I was like, you know what? I do some of these shows. Often they don't go well. And I go home and I eat a crap load of Tasty Cakes. She's like, wow, it sounds like you're an emotional eater. And I was like, no, I'm not an emotional eater. She's like, well, why do you think you overeat? And I was like, I don't know. Cause cookies taste like happiness? <laughs> Lasagna loves me for me. It's like, why does anybody overeat? Cause drugs aren't always readily available. <laughs> I can have a message for this joke. It's that I need a more reliable drug dealer. <laughs> Taking resumes. <laughs> so I, uh, I have a boyfriend. He's, uh, he's black. Way to represent. There we go. Just one of them. That's why I wanted this joke doesn't go well. But, but yeah, I bring him along just in case. But no, I, my boyfriend's black. We've been dating for three years now, and uh, we just moved in together a couple of months ago. And it's not going well. And what's weird about it is I remember entering the relationship not being racist. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But I might not leave that way. I think it should be fine though, I really do. Because if we do break up and I become a violent racist, uh, I'll just explain to people. I'll be like, no, 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 no. I wasn't raised this way. I was made this way. <laughs> He's a good dude, he's just weird. He's a weird, he's a weird guy. For our first date, he took me to a Korean dance club to meet his friends. We get there, all the dudes in the club are black, all the girls are Asian. And I turned to him right there and then, I was like, you're either the most original man here, or you did not get the memo. <laughs> Pretty 
sure this is bring your own Korean night. <laughs> Maybe the memo was in Korean. Whose fault? So I'm, uh, I'm in a weird place in my life right now. I um. At what point can you stop talking to your parents? Can you just like, is there like a time where you can be like, or did you just wait for them to die? Is that how it works? Because I think, I think they think they're dying, so they just feel the need to tell me and my siblings like all their family secrets, and I don't want to know. I have to live with all these thoughts. So I just found out that uh, mental illness runs in both sides of my family, which is awesome, if you guys are wondering. It's definitely put me on edge, because now every time I feel off or not myself, I'm like, this is it. Nuts now. Please note the date and time. But I had an off day a couple weeks ago and I called up my best friend and he was like, well, how do you know you're going nuts? I was like, well, I'm standing in the middle of traffic wearing all the clothes I own, holding a pitchfork, screaming at bread. And he was like, for real? And I was like, no, but I see the guy and I really understand him. 